This model of the Terex AC1000 is in the colours of Steyr Kranarbeiten, which is a German crane hire company and one of the first users of the AC1000. The box sleeve covers up a strapped up pair of expanded polystyrene trays, and tucked on top is the instruction book. This is quite comprehensive and includes a number of pages, and it starts off with a full parts list, and then there's a whole series of black and white photos explaining how the model is assembled. It's all done pictorially and there's no written text, and really the only thing that's missing are full weaving diagrams for the free hooks that are supplied. The packaging has been improved since the first version with an extra longitudinal strap, and that helps prevent shipping damage. With the straps cut and the lid lifted, the large array of parts can be seen. This model is a big heavy slug of metal, so let's see how much it weighs out of the box. It weighs in at well over 3 kilos or 7 pounds, so you wouldn't want to drop it on your toe. To start the assembly, the cab door mirrors come on a little sprig, so we can just bend those off. And the mirror then just gets pressed into the preformed holes in the cab. It's a bit fiddly, but it stays in okay. For this part of the assembly, we'll just put the crane into road going formation, so we'll take some thread off of the auxiliary winch. You have to use your fingers directly on the winch, and it's not something you'd want to do too much of. The thread then gets taken up to the end of the boom, and the first thing you do is to feed it through the rope guide. And then it just goes over the end of the boom, and you can reeve up the small auxiliary hook. That's an easy job, and although there's no loop at the front, if you get a couple of chains, you can hang the hook for transport. And the AC1000 is ready for the road. The chassis is modelled with a strong structure, and many of the transmission elements are modelled too. The tyres are quite chunky, and they have a good tread pattern. They are mounted on plastic wheels with different hubs for driven axles but the colour matches slightly off to the metal parts. The cab detailing is good and there's an improvement on this version of the model because it has windscreen wipers. Also nice are the very detailed style graphics. There's more interesting detailing behind the cab with the access ladder and non-slip surfacing. And another good detail is the nice heavy toothed slewing ring. The metal outrigger beams have got good detail in the castings and nice chevron graphics. The cylinder pistons are smooth and the plastic pads are detailed. At the rear there are painted lights, but surprisingly there are no number plates on this model. The crane cab has got nice metal hand railings outside, and the interior detail is reasonable. At the back there are plenty of metal work platforms to add detail, and the metal counterweight blocks have usable lifting lugs, and smart chevron graphics. The main hydraulic rams look very good because of their excellent colour match, and the metal boom has got some detailing with cable spools, and all of the pulleys used are metal. There are three hook blocks supplied with the model and they all have metal pulleys, but surprisingly they've got plastic hooks. The sideways super lift is engineered well with mainly metal parts, and that includes the pendants. For the review of the features we'll start underneath first, and each of the axles is completely independent, so the steering can be set individually on each axle. Conrad has also implemented working suspension, so there's a good degree of movement. Let's now get the AC1000 out onto the Cranes Etc Autobahn, and it travels along very smoothly in a straight line. But does it drive you around the bend? Well, if you set the steering individually on each axle, then it traces out a very nice curve. Of course, if you really want to confuse the hell out of other motorists, set the crab steering. And that's the ideal way to get the AC1000 into those very tight parking spaces. We've crabbed our way to the job site, so let's begin the setup by pulling out the outriggers. And they're nicely controlled by small hydraulic cylinders. The piston is lowered just by unscrewing it, and as you can see, it's got a nice smooth surface, so there's no ugly screw threads visible. Once you've achieved the extension you want, you can then press it into a plastic pad. Also supplied with the model are some heavy black spreader plates. These are heavy and metal, but it would have been nicer if they'd had some lifting points. You repeat the same process for the rear outriggers, and the only difference is that you need to extend them. The good thing about this whole system is that it's very strong, and will support the whole crane wheels free. We'll now move out the cab from the transport position, it just lifts up and turns round. And it's got some other features too, because it fully tilts. Not only that, but there are a couple of little access ladders which can be folded down. And these are nice little details which enhance the model. To improve access onto the carrier deck, there's also a metal stair that adds at the end. It's now that exciting time which we all enjoy, which is elevating your boom. 
This one lifts very easily because Conrad has implemented an excellent system on its hydraulic rams. So they are perfectly smooth and to secure them you use a special spanner and you use that to tighten up the top of the cylinder jacket. By doing that it grips the piston and locks the extension that you've set. It's a great system and it works really well. With the boom up the crane can now erect its own winch assembly and ballast. To facilitate that there are a couple of beams which just clip onto the carrier deck and they're used to temporarily land the winch assembly. It has pins that are just below the modelled hydraulic jacks and they slot into the beams. Next to add are two counterweight trays but get them the right way round because one has holes which need to be facing towards the back. The trays just hang on by hooks and then you can load up the counterweight blocks. The good thing about this is that because the model follows the design of the real crane it's possible to form some very interesting poses and they make good model displays. With the ballast all loaded and ready the crane then rotates to automatically attach the ballast. But here at Cranes Etc we'll do it the clunky way with a giant hand and use that to hook in the winch assembly which then is pinned into position. If the pin's too tight then just use a screwdriver to clean out some of the paint from inside the holes and also to line them up. And that enables the pin to be located reasonably easily and then it can be pushed in with a screwdriver to get a tight fit. The counterweight can then be hooked back on as long as your giant hands are strong enough to lift it. With the winch assembly attached it's now possible to unwind some thread from the main hoist drum and take it up to the boom top and put one of the bigger hooks on ready for some lifting. One nice aspect of the model is that there's lots of walkways and platforms to add and these enhance the look. They're all made of metal and they generally fit into place quite easily. Although if you take a swing at them they will dislodge. At the back of the counterweight you can fit a neat little extending ladder and that pushes into the special holes that are in the counterweight tray. That completes the detail at the back and in front of the counterweight blocks there's a whole load more platforms to add. Extending the telescopic boom is straightforward because each section pulls out smoothly and each one locks into place at full extension using a locking system. To reduce the length of the boom the process is reversed, you push in on the locking clip and then you can push down the telescopic sections. So that completes the basic erection of the crane and it's ready to go to work. The first job for this AC1000 is to dismantle a tower crane. And of course if you're that way inclined you can have fun driving the model crane yourself but it's best to use an electric screwdriver. Another feature if you want to increase the capacity of a mobile telescopic crane is to add a super lift and that's provided with this AC1000 model as a separate part that drops into place and when you've got it in the right position you insert some plastic pins to secure it. The rope goes to some pulleys that attach to the boom and you need to get those the right way round when you reeve it up. There's a small downstand pin on the pulley which can clip into the super lift for when it's being transported. There are a couple of positions on the boom at which the pulley can be attached but we'll attach it at the highest position and it's just held in place with a simple plastic pin. The super lift arms need to be able to be pushed up into position so there's a hydraulic ram that does that. So when mounting the super lift the bottom of the ram needs to be pinned into position. The last bit of pinning to do is for the straps or pendant bars and these are attached to the base of the boom. And if you haven't guessed it already yep there's a plastic pin to be used to make the connection. You know I wish I had a cookie for every time I've put a plastic pin in. I'd be the size of an elephant by now. The last small thing to do is to remove the transport clips which have held the pendant bars in place during transport. After all that and with the reeving up done we can then start to raise the superlift system. It's best to keep a close eye on everything as you do this to make sure nothing's going wrong and try if possible to keep the superlift ropes under tension. Once the boom is up to get the maximum benefit from the superlift arrangement you need to spread the arms. And again these are also controlled by hydraulic cylinders and it's all been engineered pretty well by Conrad. With the boom fully extended you can see how the superlift works. By winding the winches and tensioning it up you can pull the boom into a dead straight rigid position and that helps to increase the lifting capacity of the crane. So here we are now with the crane fully set up and the boom extended to its maximum. And it produces a very impressive looking model with an excellent profile. But of course you're all shouting how high is this model? So let's put the tape on it and it reaches an impressive 81 inches or about 205 centimeters. That was the model at its highest and now we'll strip it down to its lightest road going configuration. To reduce the weight the first thing you can do is to remove the top section of the boom. 
And the only thing to be careful is that the locking clip and spring at the end don't come flying out. That just leaves the heavy lift boom and there's a small pulley which attaches in at the top and then gets pressed into position. That leaves a hole in the top of the heavy lift boom and there's a blanking plate that presses in. And that's a nice fitting plastic piece. If you wanted at this point you could rig the crane for heavy lifting using the largest of the hooks supplied. But let's carry on with our mission to lower the transport weight. And the next thing we can do which makes a big difference is to remove the heavy outriggers. It's easy to do, there are just a couple of pins to remove, one of them is from the hydraulic ram that pushes out the outrigger. And then there's a big long pin which holds the outrigger in place. Once that's out the outrigger arrangement can be removed from the carrier. And if you wanted you could show it as a separate transport load. The boom now goes into its final resting position and you can see how the big heavy lift head fits into place. Having taken the outriggers off there's some cosmetic work to do to tidy up and there are some wheel arches that get placed over the wheels. And these are metal parts with a non-slip surface and they push into position. At the back it's the same job to do with a smaller wheel arch that goes over the rear two wheels. One last job to do is to fit some plastic chevron boards and these go onto the outrigger supports. They take a little bit of jiggling about but they are a good tight fit. And finally with all those changes made we've now achieved the crane ready for the road in its lightest road going configuration. The AC1000 is a really well engineered model by Conrad with great working features. It's got some very good detailing and it looks really nice in the colours of style. Overall it's a model with style and it's rated outstanding. Music